All right, today we're going to look at uh, the use of inductive and deductive reasoning. Um, since you guys cannot work with a partner right now, why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, start off by pausing and work. Um, uh, there's two <clears throat> uh, slides here um, that you can start with a warm-up here. Solve these three <clears throat> and then work on uh, those as well. So go ahead and pause and see if you can get those correct. So part of this is uh, recognizing patterns. And so if we notice here, we are in the bottom right, left, top, right, left, top, right. Eight would be the left. Nine would be the top. And so number 10 would be right there. Following that uh, same uh, logic going eight, nine, and then 10, the 10th one would be right there and then again same thing eight nine ten would make the pattern like so so part of that a part of using inductive and deductive reasoning we'll talk about the difference but is looking at uh pattern recognition when when um you can make those uh kinds of statements so uh, when you look at this with a Venn diagram, we should get <clears throat> so if you didn't get any of these correct, go ahead and pause and double check them. Um, recognizing when it's in a, a part of one, you know, property A, B, or C, whether it's within all the other ones. And then if you still have any questions, we can talk about that at the uh, beginning of class. So when we're looking at inductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, is, uh, a conjecture is an unproven statement that is based on observations. You use inductive reasoning when you find a pattern. So what we've been talking about so far in specific cases, and then write a conjecture for the general case. So looking at this first one, we're looking at a pattern um, based on the four figures there. And we see that in each one, the pattern is that you're adding a, another uh, block on the top and on the side. So for figure five, We'd have five going up and five going to the left. And that's the pattern that we're recognizing. Another one here looking at the star. We see that the star, the pattern is that we, number one, have a star. And then we also see that the shaded part is different. So the middle one has been shaded for all of them. And then we didn't have one shaded and then we lost two, then we lost three. So we're going to not shade those four, leaving just this one. Make and test a conjecture about the product of a negative integer and a positive integer. So if we were to talk about multiplying a positive integer and a negative integer, what would we get? So my conjecture, a positive integer multiplied by a negative integer would always result in a negative integer. In order to test that conjecture, we could do a bunch of different things, but let's just say Four, my favorite number, times negative 7 will give you negative 28. And that is just one example of verifying that conjecture. To show that a conjecture is true, you must show that it is true for all cases. You can show that a conjecture is false, however, by finding just one counterexample. So this is where we're getting into <clears throat> proof writing. 
we have to prove something is true in all the cases. But in order to prove something is false, all you need is one counterexample. So if I were to make the statement that complementary angles are congruent, I could find an example where that is a true statement. If I make two angles 45 and 45, they are complementary, yes. Are they congruent? No. I'm sorry. Whoops. I'm skipping ahead to the next one. Are they congruent? Yes. But that statement is not always true because I can come up with an example where that is not true. Let's say I made angles 30 and 60. Are they complementary? Yes. Are they congruent? No. So this would be uh, an example of giving a counterexample to prove that my conjecture is not an accurate conjecture. The absolute value of the sum of two numbers is equal to the sum of the two numbers. So if I pick two numbers, say negative 2 and negative 2, when I add them together, it equals 4. The absolute value of the sum of those two numbers is equal to the sum of those two numbers. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. I've proven that that is not true. Another example, a number squared is always greater than the number itself. There's not a ton of uh, examples here, but if I were to take the number 1 and square it, I get 1. Is that number greater than, is the, sum, is the uh, number squared greater than itself? The answer is no. So again, just provide, all you need to do is provide one counterexample in order to prove something is not true. Deductive reasoning is using facts, definitions, accepted properties. We're going to talk about all of those uh, as we go further along in uh, proof writing. And the laws of logic. <clears throat> so we, you, we make logical arguments to prove something. This is different than in inductive reasoning because they're just using patterns. There are two types of um, the laws that we're going to do. First one is the law of detachment. If the hypothesis of a conditional statement is true, then the conclusion is also true. And then the other one is called the law of syllogism, but we are going to reference that as the chain rule. So if something is true and it leads to the conclusion, and then that, since that is true, it leads to something else, we're going to make the uh, connection that if the first one is true, then we can go all the way to the third one. So first off, why don't you uh, see if you can come up with the conclusion and then decide which law it is. First one just says, if a figure is a square, then it is a rectangle. It then tells you that ABCD is a square, therefore ABCD is a rectangle. And I'm using the law of detachment. Second example says, if soccer practice is canceled, then you go to the mall after school. If it is raining today, then soccer practice is canceled. So soccer practice is canceled is said twice. So therefore, if it is raining today, then soccer practice is canceled. Since soccer practice is canceled, then you're going to go to the mall. I'm connecting multiple statements together. So if it is raining, then I'm going to go to the mall. And I'm using the law of syllogism for that or the chain rule. <clears throat> this one 
This table shows the sum of the measures of the interior angles of various polygons. What conclusion can you make about the sum of the interior angles? So we've talked about, we're going to keep talking about different shapes as we move on. But there's a pattern here that we're noticing, and we can write it as a formula. But we're adding one side every single time here. And then the sum of the angles is always going up by 180. For the, what we want to do is come up with any sided polygon. So it has n number of sides. What I notice in a triangle is that it is, it is 180 times 1. And then the second one is 180 times 2. And then 180 times 3. And 180 times 4. Look at the numbers 3 and 1, 4 and 2, 5 and 3, 6 and 4. Those numbers are always 2 apart. They're always 2 less than the number of sides. And then 180 is always a part of the formula. So if I take 180 and multiply it by the number of sides minus 2, then I could find out the number, the sum of the angles in a polygon. All right, go ahead and read these two examples and then decide if it's inductive or deductive reasoning and explain your answer. So when I look at the first one, this is deductive reasoning because I'm using facts. Second one is inductive reasoning because I am following a, I'm looking at a pattern. Use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture about the sum of a number and itself. Then use deductive reasoning to show that the conjecture is true. So when I'm doing a number and itself, I know that any number added to itself would just be n and n. And so then I can, I can show just by algebra that I know that that would be two times the value itself. Decide whether inductive or deductive reasoning is used to reach the following conclusion. This is deductive reasoning and specifically the law of detachment. So just uh, as we get ready for then talking about this in class and um, doing some practice on this, make sure you just compare and contrast inductive and deductive reasoning uh, and make sure you know the difference between the two.